trusty old vanilla. It's hard to believe it's been over five and a half years since my friend and I built this fan. So what I want to talk to you about today is during the past five years, everything that broke mechanically, camper wise, and just the annoyances of this van and would I buy it again. Van escape plan. Leave the rat race in the dust. Beep. I have been really fortunate with this van. There's not going to be a lot to talk about as far as failures. This inverter is a Kotec, and this is the second one I had. Let me tell you the story of the inverters. I'll put the specs on here for the model that that Kotec is. It does have an external fuse, and everything that's happened with the Kotec, I think, has kind of been my fault. Even with it being my fault the first time it went out, they replaced it for free because it was still within the warranty period. The first time it went out, I think the problem I had, the best I can tell, it was really weird. Um, that was a little harder problem to diagnose the first time because there was no big incident where it was really obvious that I did something stupid. I mean, when I talked to some more people who knew more about electric stuff, they said, well, what you did may have been kind of stupid, but it took a little digging. And it was actually because I was using a trickle charger to charge the batteries. If I can find any footage, I'll insert it here to show you what not to do. I think what I was doing was fine as long as I would have had the inverter off or somehow broken that connection. Uh, because I think what happened was I was trickle charging the batteries from shore power and I was using the inverter to power things while I was doing that. I think that could have been what caused the issue. So that happened within the warranty period and it was replaced for free. But I blew it out again. The second time was definitely my fault. I ran too many things at once. I was technically pushing a little maybe beyond its capacity running my Instant Pot Mini Duo. Uh, which I'll put again information here on screen for that. I think the Instant Pot Duo Mini is the perfect, perfect kitchen item for the van. In fact, it's everything you need because you can do so many different cooking methods in it. I think you can prepare about anything. It is higher wattage. And even though the Instant Pot is a little higher wattage, it cooks stuff super, super, super fast. So I think it's going to make up for that and probably end up even being more efficient. It's going to push this inverter to the limit. You'll have to be careful what you use at the same time as the Instant Pot. Probably just use it alone, but I can tell you that these two items work together. You'll find links in the description to both. So using that link will help me out a little bit. Won't cost you any extra. Technically you're supposed to allow a little more for peak operation, but the Instant Pot turns on and off so much. The inverter actually handled it well. I just powered it at the same time as another kind of big ticket electricity item and blew it. The only other issue I've had has been with my roof vent. This roof vent I'm showing you has been on and off at times. Sometimes I'll go through periods where it just won't work. Lately it's been great for a long time. I think there could just be some wire in there that's a little funny. Now I do have two different fantastic fan models. One of them is discontinued, and I think this one in the back should be the one that's still available. I called Fantastic about this problem. They were totally great. They said, just bring it by and we'll fix it because this was within the warranty period. Only problem is they're in the Midwest. They're somewhere like Ohio or somewhere by the Great Lakes. I kind of keep Texas as my hub and kind of stick in surrounding states around there typically. Besides that, this fan has worked great. And like I said, the problem kind of resolved itself. Technically, the only thing that really broke besides the inverter was the cover, this cover I'm showing you on the Fantastic Fan. These covers, I don't know if they get brittle in the sun. They really feel like they're going to break when you pull these things off and on. You've got to take them off to clean them. I mean, there's really no... <laughs> you could try to reach in between the blades and do some weird stuff, but it just seems like it's uh, asking for trouble. To not take it off to clean it. Um, so you really got to take them off to clean them and every time I do it it's just it puts me on edge a bit because it just feels like it's gonna break. You've got to pull so hard or push so hard when you're putting them back on. They're super secure I guess that's why 
and one of the times I did it I broke off one of these little tabs and when you break off the tab it just doesn't hold quite flat to the surface and it can let bugs and things through so I did replace that. At also I did at one point spring a leak and have to have this resealed around this vent. That wraps up all the RV stuff that broke. Now let's talk about the mechanical issues I've had with the van. There haven't been many. When I first bought this thing, it had a bit of a problem with the rear differential. They had to rebuild it not long after I bought the van. It cost over $1,000. Uh, I wasn't too broken hearted. Uh, I figured there was going to be, there's always something, right? Uh, whether you're buying any big ticket item, vehicle, house, whatever, there's going to be some repair you've got to do. Uh, often that's why somebody is selling something because they don't want to make a major repair. Now one issue that has bugged me a little bit but I eventually finally got used to it was the alignment on this van. There's no uneven wear so uh, I think it's really just the slight annoyance of having to hold the wheel just a little off center. Just about that much pressure sometimes it'll actually drive straight so that's one little annoyance but I've kind of gotten used to it and then the third issue that I've had with the van was around 120,000 miles I had to have the torque converter rebuilt. Took it to Amco first because I was in another state. I took it to Amco they told me like over a thousand that they would have to rebuild the whole thing but I took it over here to these folks in Texas I just waited. I took a chance and waited until I went back and they were like ah nah we could just do the torque converter, it'll be fine, 500 bucks. And they did, and it's been 20,000 more miles now. More than that, I think, more like 40,000 more miles, and everything's good. Now let's talk about annoyances. These are three things that just drive me crazy in this van. I don't know if there's actually three of them, but let's go, because uh, one of them bugs me at least more than one thing should. Okay, I've talked about these AC controls before. These annoy the crap out of me. They have the off on the mode. They should have the off on the volume, in my opinion. This really sucks. It goes from off to max air, which I understand why they did this. It's because the contractors who use this van, they're outside working in the heat, they jump in their van, they just want to turn it to maximum air to get all the guys in the van cool. It's understandable, but is that really that much harder than just doing this? Because the problem is, you got me, a guy who isn't all hot and sweaty from climbing around on a roof doing repairs, and maybe I don't want my AC to be on maximum immediately every time I turn it on, and this knob ends up wearing out. You can see, just for me touching it, this is a third party one I had to replace this with because it wore out from all the back and forth. Stupid, stupid, stupid design. This should have an off right here. And then I can just go between one and zero or if I really want to get it, it's not hard folks, just click it four times. Stupidest design thing in this whole van in my opinion. Second thing that bugs me in this van is uh, the tire pressure alarm. You can see here so this tire pressure alarm is always going off every time I turn it on and I'm pretty sure the pressure is good. So I just have to go through this menu, click this button a bunch of times, and then I get back to the fuel range where I like to keep it. And the last thing on the list, super, super simple thing, is this doesn't work. This other accessory plug I've never been able to use. So I have this one, but I keep it plugged into my GPS. So. I have to unplug this and then if I want to charge a phone or something, plug it in. Alright, so time for the big conclusion. Would I buy the van again today? Well, there's a lot of other options today. At the time I bought this van, these newfangled high roof vans like the European style vans that are now popular and made by every manufacturer are now available on the used market. So it would depend on what my needs are. Right now I don't have the need for a van. There's still a lot of life left in Vanilla. Are you planning a camper van build? Van Escape Plan provides free measurements for all the manufacturers, links provided for YouTube playlists, and free downloadable PDFs. Let's say I was going to live in a van full time for years to come, and I would really get the money out that I was going to put in of another build. Well, in that case, I would go with a high top, 
short wheelbase model that's going to be easy to park, easy to get around in, but give me room to stand up. I would have a super simple, super minimal build, but I would, since I had a high top, do a very small standing only wet bath and that would be really cool. But just something for short trips, for getting around if I want something like that, maybe for weekend or week long trips, something much smaller would be adequate. Something that gets better fuel economy. Getting into that kind of scenario, the Nissan is also interesting with that long nose and with being more truck-like. But if I was going for something really small, probably just a Transit Connect, those would be available very widely, very inexpensively for something not to use full-time for very long term. It could be full-time for short, but long term, I'd maybe want something a little bigger, you know, maybe getting into the, like I said, high top, short wheelbase, something that format would be very appealing to me. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.